Snestruck! Hi there, I've gotten like three dozen requests for this video, so let's take a quick look at every Super Nintendo and Super Famicom game featuring a Disney character, movie, or TV show. Let's just start with all the games featuring Mickey Mouse as the lead character, starting with A Magical Quest starring Mickey Mouse made by Capcom. This is a game that starts out slowly. It seems pretty bland on the first level, just another paint-by-numbers platformer, but the game gets better and better the further you progress as Mickey unlocks different outfits that enable certain powers like projectiles, a grappling hook, and a fire hose, among other things. The level design also complicates complements these abilities very well. Mickey's magical quest may be rather short and bare bones, but it's still a fun playthrough today. There's two sequels to that game, the first being The Great Circus Mystery starring Mickey and Minnie, and as the title suggests, this game is two-player co-op, and that's really the only major difference from the first game. It's still six levels, and there's still four outfits you unlock and switch between as you play. This time around, it's stuff like a vacuum cleaner and a hobby horse with a toy gun. The graphics and sprite animation are a bit better, and the settings are a bit livelier as well, so if you liked the first game, you're sure to like this one too, especially if you're looking for a decent co-op platformer. However, you might be even better off with the third game in the series, which was only released for the Super Famicom and never left Japan. It's Mickey to Donald Magical Adventure 3. Again, this is more of the same kind of stuff, but there's minor changes to the level layout here and there that allows for a bit more exploration, including bonus rooms that can get you some extra items. The outfits this time around are fantastic, like this medieval-style knight armor. Mickey looks like a typical knight, while Donald just has a barrel and a bowl. The thing is, though, Mickey's armor is so heavy, he sinks in water while Donald is able to float. There's all sorts of minor touches like that here that really make the game feel complete. So if you're going to play any of the three Magical Quest games, the third game is probably the best. Since we're talking games that never left Japan, there's also Mickey no Tokyo Disneyland Daiboken. This one's a bit of a departure, developed by GRC instead of Capcom, but it's just as brief with only six levels. What makes this one stand out is that Mickey has a tank on his back that fills balloons with either water or helium. Water balloons can be used as projectiles to take out enemies, and helium balloons allow Mickey to float and quickly zip around each level. This game is predicated on exploration more than anything, so you'll be using the helium balloons quite a bit. The controls can be a bit tough to get used to, but this is still a good game worth checking out. Let's go back to North America with Mickey Mania, The Timeless Adventures of Mickey Mouse. This is such a great idea for a game. You play as Mickey visiting some of his past cartoons, starting all the way back with Steamboat Willie and making your way toward more recent settings. The visual design here is inspired, featuring some great sprite animation. The platforming, though, is a bit bland. The game isn't very challenging at all, and the SNES version only has five levels. Plus, there's loading time. Really? Ugh. If you really want to play Mickey Mania, you're better off with the Sega Genesis version. That's got an extra level, no loading time, as as well as wider resolution so you can see more of Mickey's world. This is an okay game on SNES, but you're better off with Sega on this one. Next is Mickey's Ultimate Challenge. This is a puzzle game that's clearly intended for a younger audience. I'm talking like eight or younger, and I don't think too many kids that young are watching a video about Super Nintendo games of all things. So I'll just say that this game is okay, it accomplishes what it sets out to do, and it does it better than some of those god-awful educational Mario games. For example, one puzzle has you jumping on books in alphabetical order, another is a simple card matching game, another is like Simon Says. So yeah, Mickey's Ultimate Challenge is clearly intended for kids, so most people watching this aren't gonna get much out of it. To wrap up the Mickey Mouse games, there's a game called Mickey's Playtown Adventure, A Day of Discovery. This one was cancelled despite being completely finished, and that's too bad because this features riveting action like Mickey putting away his clothes, picking carrots, and cooking stuff. Again, this one was clearly intended for kids, but if you're looking for a game like that, you're probably better off with Mickey's Ultimate Challenge. Let's move on to another Disney character. Donald Duck had a couple Super Nintendo games, starting with Maui Mallard and Cold Shadow. This one actually originated on the Sega Genesis, so you could argue you're better off playing that version, but this is still a perfectly good game. Rather than settle for just a run-of-the-mill Donald Duck platformer, this game sees Donald playing as two different monikers, the detective Maui Mallard and his alter ego Cold Shadow, who's got crazy ninja skills. Regardless of what platform, the sprite animation here is fantastic and the highlight of the game. However, this is another game that starts out kind of slowly. You only play as Maui Mallard the first level, but after that you can switch between the two characters, and the level design is cleverly done, so you have to use each persona's unique abilities to progress through the game. This is a game well worth checking out. 
Donald Duck no Maho no Boshi is another Japan only game for Super Famicom and again the sprite animation here is so good. I guess something about Donald brought out the best in artists and animators or something, I don't know. The gameplay here is a bit goofy however, each level has a different challenge. First you're on a bike delivering mail, next you're hopping around on a building ledge, washing windows, then you're retrieving a canary without waking up the guard dog. The idea is that you're working for money to buy Daisy Duck a new hat for her birthday. So yeah, the gameplay is pretty limited to say the least, but still, I can't help but admire how this game looks. It captures the Disney art style and movement so well, so if you're really into Disney or Donald Duck, then this is a game worth checking out. Alright, next let's just flip through the rest of the games in alphabetical order. These are mostly based on movies or TV shows, starting with Aladdin. This one is in a similar vein to the Magical Quest series in that it's a pretty simple platformer that's very straightforward, not too difficult, and can be completed in one sitting in less than an hour. Go ahead and argue that the Genesis version is better. If that's your opinion, congratulations. The SNES version though is still perfectly fine, and Aladdin is a good playthrough featuring great looking pixel art, varied settings representing unique platforming challenges, forgiving controls, and lots of hidden areas and bonus items to discover. Plus there's no sword. Get out of here with that sword stuff. Next, there's another Super Famicom release that never left Japan, it's Alice No Paint Adventure. And hey, check it out, it's a Mario Paint type game based on Alice in Wonderland. Well, kind of. The paint options are pretty limited, it's pretty much just a coloring book with some really easy mini-games thrown in. It is at least compatible with the SNES mouse. But hey, I can definitively tell you, this is a game that does in fact exist. Beauty and the Beast is yet another side-scrolling platformer, you'll find that to be a recurring theme in this video, and it's made by the same people who made the Judge Dredd and Stargate SNES games. This one is along those same lines, this is a thoroughly okay game, the biggest strength being the visual design and the great looking backgrounds, and the biggest annoyance being how enemies appear out of nowhere so quickly that you barely have a chance to react. You play as the Beast and the game follows the story of the movie just fine, but yeah, this is your average movie-based platformer that's marred by the ridiculous difficulty level. Bonkers is a game I did a video on not too long ago. It's based off of the old Disney Afternoon TV show and was made by Capcom. However, it plays a lot like a Konami game, that being Tiny Toon Adventures Buster Bus Loose, because it has the same speed meter that allows you to sprint through stages and take out any enemies and obstacles in your way. There's five levels here with two stages each, and again, this is par for the course for Capcom Disney games. It's short, sweet, and well made, but don't expect too much because you'll finish the game before you know it. Goof Troop is in the same boat as Bonkers, it's based on a Disney Afternoon TV show and developed by Capcom, but this is a top-down action game predicated on solving puzzles to move on to the next area. This is easily one of the best games on this list and one of the best multiplayer games on the Super Nintendo because it has both players working together to open up pathways while taking out enemies. Don't get me wrong though, this game has every bit as good of a single player experience as well, which just goes to show how cleverly designed Goof Troop is. There's five levels with a boss fight at the end of each and a password system to try your progress, and you use everything around you to get by. Pots, boards, barrels, keys, and tools like shovels and hook shots. If you like simple puzzle solving action games like this, then Goof Troop is a must. It toes the line between a simple straightforward interface with smart puzzle design. Back to the side-scrolling platformers we go with Jungle Book. You play as Mowgli as you climb vines, swing from vines, and climb more vines and swing from more vines. The levels are huge here, with the goal being to collect a certain number of gems, then finding a certain character placed somewhere on the level so you can progress with the story. This is yet another game that looks really good. The sprite animation is impressive, and overall the game accurately captures the spirit of the film. My main nitpick is the controls are pretty slippery and take some getting used to, but this is a perfectly okay game. I'd take it over something like Beauty and the Beast. Next we have The Lion King, and if you remember, I listed this game as one of the toughest on the Super Nintendo. This is one of those games that could be okay, as long as you're okay with spending hours mastering it. Like this section here, where you have to be insanely precise with grabbing onto these hippo tails, or this section here, where you have to arrange the monkeys a certain way so they throw you in the correct direction. I mean, come on, this game is just ridiculous. I can't call it bad, because there are some redeeming qualities here, like the music, and of course, like every other game on this list, it looks fantastic, but the difficulty here is a deal breaker. Pinocchio is yet another side-scrolling platformer, but this game is actually pretty dang good. I know I sound like a broken record saying this, but man, these Disney games have some great sprite animation. Well, I mean, it is Disney, of course the artwork is gonna be great. This game has a very similar feel to it as stuff like Lion King and Mickey Mania, but it's not nearly as difficult as Lion King or nearly as bland as Mickey Mania. So this is one I can recommend. It's a very short game, but it's decent enough for a single-player platformer. 
Timon and Pumbaa's Jungle Games is of course based on the two comic relief characters from The Lion King, and this game appears to have been created solely to cash in on their popularity, because all this game is is four mini-games, pinball, a gallery shooter, a frogger ripoff, and a Space Invaders kind of game, where Pumbaa belches at incoming enemies. Each mini-game is fine, I guess, although the gallery shooter stage isn't that good, but yeah, it's just four mini-games, you're better off skipping this one. Finally, we come to Toy Story. This is a pretty impressive title. It manages to capture the unique Toy Story visual style accurately in a 2D environment. I mean, this has kind of a Donkey Kong Country vibe to it. Unfortunately, the controls aren't that great, but there is at least some variety in the gameplay. There's a couple levels where you guide a remote-controlled car. There's a couple racing stages. There are stages that are almost like a one-on-one -on -one fighting game where you have to get Buzz Lightyear to come down from his coke binge, I guess? I mean, jeez, settle down. And there's also a first-person perspective stage where you have to get through a maze, which is pretty interesting. Toy Story is a really ambitious game, not your generic movie game fodder. The controls for the platforming take some getting used to, but there's a lot here, so it's worth checking out. Alright, that's all of them. If I had to pick the three best in no particular order out of this list, I would go with Mickey to Donald's, Magical Adventure 3, Goof Troop, and Aladdin, with Maui Mallard in Cold Shadow, and Pinocchio being a couple extra ones I would recommend checking out. And that's all for now, thanks for watching, and I hope you have a great rest of your day.